How's it going guys? I'm Aaron Baker from Techno Buffalo and it's time for a smartphone smackdown. Just to start off the new year, we thought, you know what? Let's pit two of the highest end Android phones together and see which one comes out on top. One is the Samsung Galaxy S3. Now, it's packing some awesome specifications and it's been out for a while. And it's got things like a 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.8 inch Super AMOLED HD display, an eight megapixel camera, and now Android 4.1, voice crack included on the Samsung Galaxy S3. Actually, you don't get the voice crack, but we're just gonna pretend like you do. Then you have the HTC One X Plus over here, the successor to the HTC One X, and it's packing a quad-core NVIDIA Tegra 3 CPU, a 4.7 inch HD display, an eight megapixel camera, and Android 4.1. Which one's gonna take it home in the smartphone smackdown? Let's go take a look. Two of the hottest Android devices here in the office right now that are available on US carriers. One is the Samsung Galaxy S3. This is available on Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile, US Cellular for $199. But what's really great about this device is you can find it cheaper in a lot of different places. Amazon, Wirefly, all those different third-party retailers, Best Buy Mobile and more, are often selling this device for less than the $199 price which it debuted at, at least for the 16 gigabyte version, in their respective either online stores or brick and mortar stores. So you've got this device, it's been out for a while, it's available in different colors depending on what carrier you're on. On AT&T, you've got blue and white on every carrier, but on AT&T you have it in red, and Verizon you have it in brown, and in black as well as the white and then the uh, blue as well. So the One X Plus over here, an AT&T device available for $199. The killer here is specifications. It's got a 1.7 gigahertz quad core NVIDIA Tegra 3 processor, a 4.7 inch HD display, 720p HD display, eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording and HTC's image sense chip. And then you got Android 4.1 as well with HTC sense four plus. And then over on this side, 1.5 gigahertz dual core Snapdragon S4 CPU, a 4.8 inch Super AMOLED HD display. It's also 720p and eight megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording. And then of course a 2100 milliamp hour non-removable battery, excuse me, removable battery over here on this one. It's a 2100 milliamp hour non, or yes, excuse me, non-removable battery on this device. So both of these devices are incredibly specced. They're great Android devices. They're high-end contenders. This one, what really draws it though, even though it only has one gigabyte of RAM, is the 64 gigabytes of internal storage on this device. 64 gigs out of the gate. Compare this to something like the Apple iPhone 5, which if you want it in the 64 gigabyte variant, you're gonna pay 399 to get it for that price or for that with that amount of storage. So that's something that's really nice about the One X. You get a great deal of internal storage for a good price point. Then you have this device, like I said over here, the Galaxy S3, packing some great specs, incredible seller. Let's take a look at some of the personalization on both of these devices. But before we get too far into that, take a look at the build quality on both. This one, polycarbonate shell, very similar to the HTC One X that came out earlier in the year on AT&T in terms of design. You've still got the same micro USB charging port on the left side. The volume rocker over on the right side, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and power button up top, your micro SIM card slot right back here in the back, and then of course your camera on the back as well. Then the Galaxy S3, a little bit more of a plastic feel, which you're either gonna love or hate. Some people love the lightweight feel of it, some people hate it. It's got a volume rocker on the left side, power button on the right side, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top, and you got your micro USB charging port down here at the bottom, and then on the front you've got capacitive buttons as you do down here. Three capacitive buttons, back, home, and recent applications. Then over here, menu, back, and then a physical home button, which doubles up in Android 4.1 to bring up Google Now, and then of course your recent applications as well. To get to that over here, press and hold home to access Google Now, and then press and hold the menu button to access your recent apps, and you can customize that menu button and make it your own in terms of if you want it to be a menu button or a recent applications button. All you have to do, Press it for menu, press and hold for recent applications if you have that enabled. But let's talk about personalization so we don't get too far off of the beaten path here. You've got a couple of different options here and both of these devices do a great job when it comes to personalization. You have the typical Android stuff here, things I love like notification bar, things where you can get all your, all your messages in one place. Then of course you have your wallpaper configurations, things like that. What I really like in applications, widgets over here, We'll take a look at the widgets on this device, and then just press and hold the One X Plus to access those widgets. So out of the box, you get three home screens on the One X Plus. You have the ability to add four more to make seven, and we'll bring those in so you can see. And then we'll press and hold, and it'll bring up our widgets. Now HTC, both HTC and Samsung, I should say, offer a great number of widgets on their devices, some of which are obviously stock Google widgets, and some of which 
our manufacturer based widgets. For example, calendar HTC, you can see the two different calendar options. You've got an Android option, then you have an HTC option, and within that, you've got a couple of different types of calendar. You've got a monthly calendar, you've got a weekly calendar, and then you've got a per appointment calendar. And then over here on widgets, you've got your calendars in here, your two by three, your four by four. So you've got some different Samsung options in addition to the stock Google options as well. So Samsung brings in their own widgets, HTC brings in their own widgets, and the great thing about Android 4.1 is they're customizable. See, there we go. So I can customize that and make it my own. As you can see, they're very similar with the HTC widget as well. So we'll just do all calendars and hit OK. And we'll go back home. And we'll scroll over to that widget, press and hold it. And you can see that it's customizable as well, quickly and easily, which is really, really nice. So call quality and battery life are pretty interesting as well. In addition to the customization, both of these devices do really well in the call quality department. The earpiece sounds nice and loud. I've had no problem with the speaker phones on either the Galaxy S3 or the One X Plus. And I find that the battery life is a little bit better on the Galaxy S3. Now, granted, it's a 2,100 milliamp hour battery powering both of these devices, and they both have 4G LTE capabilities on AT&T. So you're not going to get blazing awesome battery life if you're using this device for more than kind of light to moderate use. That said, I'm finding about 11 to 13 hours on the Galaxy S3. I'm finding about 9 to 10 on the HTC One X Plus. And obviously that depends based on your personal usage, if you email more than I do or you watch videos more than I do. But I do find that while the standby time is incredibly good on the One X Plus, the actual battery life itself could use a little bit of work, even though this is moving up from the original One X. The original One X had an 1800 milliamp hour battery. This has a 2100 milliamp hour battery. So a bigger battery, but a processor that consumes a little bit more of that battery makes for a slightly better battery performance all around, but still not quite a part of some of the other devices like the Galaxy S3 uh, and other high-end Android devices on the market. Now let's take a look at camera as well. And there's some great camera settings on both of these devices that really make them useful. Let's go into applications. We'll go to the camera and take a look. Start up camera. And we'll start this one up and while we're doing that, we'll do this one as well. Now HTC offers an awesome feature on theirs, their ImageSense chip. And what I love is, let's say you're at a soccer game or a football game and you wanna take pictures in burst mode as quickly as possible. Maybe you're your daughter's soccer game. You can quickly take a bunch of different pictures and then save those, and it'll bring up a list of all those pictures. You can choose the best shot, you can delete the rest, but you've got 20 pictures to choose from, and likewise, you can be recording. And so we'll be recording a video like we are right now, and I can click the button and take still pictures as well. So little features like that I find particularly useful. This is something that was a carryover from the original One series, the One X and the One S, that were announced at Mobile World Congress last year. And of course, you got your settings in here as well where you can change ISO, white balance, continuous shooting, all that good stuff. Now over here, Great options as well. You've got your settings, which you can come in here and you can do very similar settings in here. You can press and hold and do kind of a burst mode of sorts. And I'll come in here so you can see burst shot. And I can quickly take, and I have the sound turned off, but you can see I can take 20 quick burst pictures in here as well. And I can choose best photo. And if I choose best photo, it allows me to choose the best of eight pictures. And I can click and process those and find my personal favorite or the one that I think came out the best and snap a picture and be good to go, which is really, a nice feature. So you've got these features on both devices. What I really like though about the Galaxy S3 is the personalization it brings in addition to Android. So obviously Android has some great customization, some great personalization choices. What I really like is that they moved it to the next level with the Galaxy S3. So let's take a look, for example, let's say going down through here and you want to take a look at some of the lock screen customizations. Now you have some lock screen customizations on the One X Plus as well. You've got this typical half circle lock screen that you've seen on HTC devices with Sense in the past. And there's some great new benefits to the One X Plus, some new lock screen, some new themes, and more we can go into settings and personalize. You can take a look at some of those skin, wallpaper, lock screen style, a bunch of different options here. We can change the skin around and really make this device our own. But where I think Samsung takes it to the next level is we can come over here to lock screen options and you can see some really cool things that a lot of times I think to myself, why weren't these in stock Android? Or maybe this could be a springboard for future Android options in stock versions. So you've got dual clock here, information ticker. You can set this and really make it your own. For example, we can come down here to camera quick access and turn it on and I can hit OK turn it off and back on, and I can press and hold the screen, and as soon as I turn the device, and then it goes right into the camera. So there are a lot of different cool shortcuts in the software that really make this device useful, and it's not just with the lock screen, it's also in the main area as well. Let's go into settings and not Music Hub. Let's jump in here to settings, and we'll come up here to display, and let's go down here to Smart Stay. Things like this, screen stays on as long as you look at it. So with Smart Stay enabled, if I'm staring at the screen, the screen stays on in Smart Rotation. It will detect when I'm laying in bed, for example, and it won't rotate the screen if it sees that my face 
is staying in a certain position. That's a really, really nice feature in addition to font style and font size and battery percentage and more. So I'm a big fan of a physical battery percentage. You do get that on TouchWiz as well. You can see it says 94% up here in addition to kind of the arbitrary battery meter. Over on the HTC side, you don't get that level of customization just yet, although I hope to see that in future versions of HTC Sense. So it's a tough call on this smartphone shootout between two high-end Android devices, both of these on AT&T, then of course the Galaxy S3 is available on a bunch of different carriers in the US. Who's gonna win? So as always, it's a tough call between smartphones. It really depends on what you use your device for. If you use email more, web browsing more, there may be a phone that's more suited to you than another one. That said, it's gotta be a winner in a smartphone smackdown, and the winner is the Samsung Galaxy S3. This thing has got the best of almost every bit of the world in terms of specs, in terms of performance, in terms of features, and availability across multiple carriers. So it is the champion of the Smartphone Smackdown. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like this video if you wanna see more Smartphone Smackdowns and stay tuned to Techno Buffalo. Check out our Instagram feed at instagram.com slash technobuffalo. Follow me on Twitter at Aaron C. Baker and the company account at Techno Buffalo. I'm Aaron Baker and I'll see you next time.